Greetings and welcome to Anime Rewrite, presented by me, Isaac Hyde. Here I delve into the annals of anime history, rip out a few pages, and write some of my own. Today's quandary is going to get a little funky. Cowboy Bebop is, of course, one of the most beloved anime of all time. The writing, the music, the characters, everything was just spot on. Which is why when Spike Storm's Red Dragon headquarters alone in the final episode, fights the only opponent who's implied to be capable of killing him, and collapses at the end without resolution, it drove us crazy. But, what if he didn't take on the Red Dragons alone? What if the Bebop crew didn't split up, or at least came back together and took on Spike's checkered past together? It's true that Jet was injured in a shootout leading up to the finale, but the crew as a whole would have still been quite capable. And truly, who could pass up the chance to share another season with our fuzzy-haired vagabond? So, shall we? We don't know exact details of how many syndicate members there were or what kind of defenses the building had. However, we do know that Jet's police contact was convinced the police couldn't stop them, that they had the resources to own large spaceships, and that they knew Spike was coming. So it's no surprise that even Mr. Devil's Luck himself just barely managed to make it to the top floor in order to face down his old partner in crime. His potential final moments show that there were still plenty of Syndicate members left even after all he'd gone through. It was a suicide mission, and even Spike might not have made it if he wasn't already familiar with both the Red Dragons and, presumably, the layout of their headquarters. Not to mention being saved by his old colleague, Shin, before he did reach the top. For all we know, Vicious could have cleared the way for Spike to ensure he'd have at least a slim chance of reaching their final battle. What is certain is that he never would have let the Bebop crew join him on his kamikaze mission. Let's be clear, regardless of how romantically the man phrased it, he wasn't planning on making it out of that building alive. The love of his life was dead, his old friend turned heartless crime lord was waiting, and if he didn't take the fight to them, the Syndicate likely would have never let up until one of the two was dead. Spike wished to close the book on his old life, but he wouldn't have wanted to take down his new crew of lovable derelicts with him. So even if the Bebop family hadn't broken up, he would have gone to handle his business alone in typical Spike fashion. But since when did the Bebop crew actually listen to each other? They had already tried to repay Spike for his rescue in Ballad of Fallen Angels, as well as attempting to back him up against the crazy carnival cat killer. Of course, only those of us in the biz are familiar with such technical jargon. It was apparent to at least Faye and Jet that if something was going to do him in, it would be the Red Dragons. So yes, he might not have let them storm the Bastille with him, but that wouldn't stop his fellow miscreants from intervening independently if that was what they had decided to do. Between Jet's injury and the stupendous number of enemies, they would have waited until Spike started his attack, and then provided backup with their barely functional Hammerhead and Redtail ships, sparing Spike from some or all of his wounds as Fay ultimately joined him on foot. He wouldn't be happy about any of this, but it's not like he could just start over once they began. They would reach Shin together, and with both Spike and Faye covering him as he opened the door leading to Vicious, he would have been around to help hold the Red Dragon members back as Spike and Vicious underwent their final battle. Even without wounds, Spike would have had a hard fight ahead of him. It's hinted in the flashbacks that Vicious had used Red Eye, the same family of drug that first episode Antonio Bandetta's baddie, Asimov, used to dodge bullets. That, coupled with his combat experience and familiarity with Spike, would have resulted in another one of their near-death stalemates, at the very least. And even with Faye and Shin working together, they would still be heavily outnumbered. 
That is, until the Martian police arrived on a tip-off from Jet and began arresting the weakened Red Dragons. Shin and Fei would rush to the injured Spike's side as the Bebop descended, piloted remotely by Ed and I. They would clamber aboard the Hammerhead and make their getaway. You see, they never could have taken down all the Red Dragons, but with the crew on the scene to tend to Spike's injuries, the Syndicate crippled by the police's well-timed involvement, and Vicious either dead or in prison, the series ending would be about as bittersweet as a spoonful of honey. Surely it wouldn't have had the raw emotion of the original, and artistically, yes, it lacks the character of it. One would prevail as a result of the new relationships they made, even if just barely. And I think we can all agree that this would be an easier weight to carry. What did you think of this little scenario? Can you think of a better one? Inform me in the opinion boxes below, and make sure to firmly flip those like and subscribe switches to keep appraised of future weekly installments. And I'll see you, Space Cowboy. Bang. This isn't even gonna, what I'm gonna be wearing. Ah, oh, fuck it. Just go over there, you. I can't take it out, cuz. Bigger still. Damn it. Let me sign it. I'll wave y'all with my perks. To see your skills. That's right. That's right. I love this world. But everything else was more than fine. Just let me slide on me on my. Ah, yes. I see the camera now. I see you too. Three. You know you're not supposed to like go really like, far away, right? Do it again. Sure. <laughs>